Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Spark Networker. This is uh, Monday, and it's the what the eighth of August, uh, two thousand and twenty-two. Today, we're going to talk about what's holding you back, and so we're going to hear from people that are on the call today, and we're going to take up what's holding them back as an individual. And then see what we can add to this as a solution or a work, uh, you know, workaround to deal with and um, provide some information. So who wants to start first and uh, give us a topic to talk about? What's holding you back? I will. Okay, go. One of the things that I have is a very difficult time with the phone and calling people. I don't know if it's because I'm worried I'm going to get turned down. I don't know if it goes back years uh, due to, uh, you know, just other uh, psychological things. Uh, but I really have a hard time motivating myself to make calls. Understood. Okay. So I talk myself yeah. out of it. Okay. Understood. So what's holding Sue back in this particular situation is the, the, the thousand pound elephant called the phone um, and all the ramifications that go with calling people. Now, this is not an unusual set of circumstances, but the key to it is what to say. So in other words, um, it did, let's, let's use a couple of examples to show you what I mean. So you're going to have Thanksgiving dinner and you're going to invite your friends over to come over for Thanksgiving dinner. How easy would that be to call them up and invite them to your Thanksgiving dinner? It would probably be pretty very easy. And, and the, re the reason why is you're familiar with what's going to happen. You're familiar with the event. You know what go you're going to do. You know what's going to be put on. And you're very familiar with the terminology, the words, and the language that you're going to use to talk to somebody else about. So... And if they say no, then they say no. Maybe they've got, you know, you'd understand if they had another. another um, yeah. Let's see, Papa's caterpillar. Um, could you? Those are like the Nico's. Yeah. Lynn? Okay, well, I'll mute you then. Thank you. So. Yes. Yeah, there you go. I'm not going to open my, my sandwich. I'm going to put my. Thank you. Okay. So let's carry on here. So let, let's look at this from the standpoint of what would be the objective of call, you know, again. So you've got a plan, and the plan is that you want to talk to somebody else. You have an agenda that you want to talk about. You want to. You know, you've got a message you want to get across, you want to uh, present your idea, whatever. So the first step of this is to really have down what it is that you want to get across to the person that you're talking to. Now, when I would did this by a number of times, I've done this for a number of situations where I'm wanting to get somebody involved with what I'm doing, or I want to provide information, or I want to see if they could become a client. So I'm first of all going to look at the person that I've talked to and understand who am I talking to? What would be of interest? What would be the right approach? What would be the right words to say? Now, do I just come out and hit them over the head and say, hey, listen, I want you to join me in Nikon, or I want you to buy all my products? Probably not. But what I would do is enter into a conversation, and I always say this, the good roads conversation. How's it going? What's going on? Hadn't talked to you for a while. Maybe talk to you, whatever, whatever the circumstance is. 
then I'm going to introduce what I want to talk about by asking a question. So let's say that I'm, I'm starting my Nikon business and uh, I really know what I want. I figured that I've got that game plan. We, we've, there's a whole bunch of information on how to do this, but I need to make a living and I wanna do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do with anybody that I'm gonna to talk to is I'm gonna tell them who I am and what I'm all about. Now, you know, if you let, let's like, let's give an analogy to this because I think that's really important. So let's say you're a, a new attorney. You just got out of law school. You've got your, your license, you can practice law in your state and uh, you, you go get an office and you hang your shingle, you've got a desk, you've got a secretary, now you need clients. So what are you gonna do, just sit there? Or are you gonna get out there and start asking if anybody needs your help? If anybody needs your assistance, if anybody, you know, now what kind of law are you gonna practice? Are you just gonna be a general practice? A lawyer and you practice all kinds of law or are you going to specialize depending on where you're at and in the city you'd probably specialize more than than a general practice so the idea of talking to somebody about what you do then becomes really important now when i first started this business the first thing i decided to do was i said okay i'm, I'm going to do this as a profession this is what i'm going to do as a profession so i'm going to hang my shingle so to speak, on the wall. And then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to phone everybody I know and tell them what I'm doing and what I'm all about. And then I'm going to find out if they might be interested. And what I, my job is, is to find out what's important to them. What do they need? What do they want? So initially, when you make a call to call other people, it's to get information. You may not be able to get them to get what you want you may not be able to get them involved because they may not be interested in what you what you have or or what you're all about but the key to making the call is being prepared now i worked in the telemarketing industry um i did it with yellow pages i did it with oil and gas i did it with uh, investments in the wireless digital community and we were always calling people to see if we could get them involved with what we wanted to do. Now, the interesting thing with all of those enterprises, we had scripts. We had scripts. Now, today they've taken that idea and do you, you get these, ever get these robocalls from a computer saying, hi, how are you? You know, uh, the, the, you know and then all of a sudden, they, if you don't answer it right, the computer hangs up on you, very rude. Um, but anyway, it's the same kind of idea. So I'd call somebody up and, hi, Mr. Jones, this is uh, Dave Rolf. I'm with, you know, Leland Capital or I'm with Yellow Pages or I'm, I'm with whatever company I was with. And uh, the reason for my call today is blah, 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 whatever it was. So they had an idea of who I was, who was calling, why, and then I would say now, we're in the industry of, or we're in the process of, or we're in, in, in the business of, and then I explain the business and we're looking for people that might be interested in what we have to offer. And then the rest is just asking a question and listening to what their answers are. Now, here's what I found over time. The worst thing that anybody could say to me was, no, I'm not interested. That was the worst thing. If I was nice, if I was polite, if I was informative, if I was cheery, all of those good things, most people wanted to engage in a decent conversation. Now, if I didn't do it right, in other words, if I just got on the phone, hey, I, I, listen to me, I'm here, I'm calling you to do this. I want, you know, I mean, I was rude or whatever, and I was pushy. Those kind of, pe those kind of people that I, I get on my lines, I don't talk, I don't like talking to. And I don't think you'd like to talk to them either. So the answer to your question, real simply, is be prepared, script out what you're going to say, have, a, have an objective of your call, and then just keep doing it. Now, here's the interesting part of it. 
after a while, you're going to get so darn good at it that nothing will bother you. And, I, and, and, and that's the practice piece of, of doing this kind of an activity. So if I go back to um, my oil and gas days, I, I'd dial maybe 100 dials a day. Um, I'd maybe reach 20 people. Of those 20 people, I might be able to present to five or six or seven, maybe eight. And of that, I might get four or five packages sent out of people that would take the information and take a look at it. So it was a funnel, you know, it was a sorting system. Now, I had to look at that and say, okay, well, that's, that's the job. That's what I have to do. And, and, but here was the realization over time. Not everybody's ready when you're ready. Not everybody's ready when you're ready. Not everybody is in the circumstance that you need them to be in when you call them. Now, let, let's, go, let's go back here for a minute and take a look at that aspect because this is also very important. Last, last week, we, um, I think it was last week, we had a new silver on. Um, and, uh, and Debbie was, you know, she became a new silver, but she'd been involved with Nikon 20 years ago, 25 years ago, then left because of circumstances that weren't favorable to her situation and then came back, you know, after a period of 25 years and had a, a re-look at what's going on. Well, that's what I'm talking about being ready. See, sometimes when you call somebody up, they're, they're just not ready to do what you wanna do because that's not on their agenda. That's what not what they're interested in to solve today. And, and if you look at life and you look at people and you look at everything that's going on, there's so many things going on with people today you know, that's the that's the interesting situation. So the way in is by be nice, be friendly, start social chit chat, ask questions and listen and ask the questions. So when I was prospecting for the business, I would get into, well, how's business going? How's job going? Do you like what you're doing? Are you satisfied? Are you happy? Do you is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? Not just bang, 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 but, you know, nice social inter action with people because what I wanted to hear were two very important things dissatisfaction and need of change those are the two key conditions that you need to look for when you're talking to somebody so you say to somebody well <clears throat> how do you like what you're doing ah, I hate it <laughs> okay understood so what does that tell you? They don't like what they're doing. So they would probably be open to look at something else. Or you ask them how they're doing. I love it. Ben, this is the best job I've ever had in my entire life. Okay, so they're probably not going to be qualified. And again, you the, there was a take a look series. In the take a look series, there was the, the, the video on qualifying. What you have to put in perspective here Number one, what is it that you want? And now you've got to go find it. And, and that, that becomes the issue. So it's like you're going to a fancy ball and you need a new dress or you need a new suit. You know, Now, some will just go to the store and they'll find the first thing, that's it. Some will take a long time to look. Some will go to a hundred different stores. Everybody's different in what they do and how they approach things. So the same thing would apply with, with circumstance that you need to deal with, Sue. So again, be prepared, practice, write it down a few times. Now, here would be the next step that I think would be really helpful. Get together with another distributor and, and role play with each other. Um, you know, drill it. You know, by, by drilling it, it's like practice it, practice it, practice it. Um, I remember my upline back in the day when he was getting started, he'd take his daughter's dolls and he'd put them on the couch in the basement and he would practice giving a wellness preview to the dolls. Now, when I was given scripts, you know, it, it took me a few weeks, if not a couple of months to really feel comfortable with the script because it was not practice. It was just practice, 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 practice. So I'm sure I could ask you to cook a Thanksgiving dinner and you'd whip it together in a couple of minutes. 
Same thing would apply here. Why? Practice, practice, practice. So does that answer your question, Sue? Okay. So what we're doing today is we're talking about, um, let's see, let's see, what's holding you back? Somebody else have something that's holding them back. Dave, I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, in the past, talked to a number of people, and I guess I'm, I'm, my past is holding me back from my future because we had a little bit of success and then it all fell apart. And it's like, okay, how do I talk to somebody when they say, well, how are you doing? I'll say, well, <laughs> no, I, I have no team at the moment, but I'm starting. All right. Excellent question. Thanks, Renee, and an excellent situation and something that applies to many people. So here, here would be the first thing that I would look at. How many people do you think in the world don't know about Nikon? Most. <laughs> Most. So the majority of people out there really don't know what we are. Now, the, the key to this is obviously you. And I say you, I mean all of you on the, on the call, your particular situation, your desire, your intention, your drive, okay? So we know the mechanics. The, me the mechanics of the business are, and what I mean by the mechanics, the, the, what you have to do to make it work. So you have to talk to people. Now, the majority of the people that I got involved with the business, I didn't know. And that was an interesting concept. The majority of the people that I got into the business, I did not know they were not friends and they were not family. So they came about by my interaction with other people in life and living. So in, in the sense of uh, a renewed plan, the first thing that I would do here in a situation like that was, I'd look at, well, what was the original purpose you had when you got, got involved with Nika? I'd write that down. I'd take a look at that. So, you know, that, that would be okay. So I got involved with this because that's what I wanted. Now, the next thing I would do is really, really isolate what I wanted and really understand what that was and really understand what that meant. And then I would, ne the next step after that would be, what does that mean in terms of what Nikon says? Because uh, uh, that's how it works. In other words, let's say that you want, um, uh, I mean, tell me something that you might want as a result of this business. Financial independence. Okay. So you have to define that for yourself. Um, you know, I, I'm on the internet. I look at things and, it, you know, you constantly see how to retire with 500,000, how to retire with a billion, how to retire, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be an economic situation for most people, simply because that's what the world says. The world says, if you don't have money, it's hard to buy food. It's hard to put a roof over your head. It's hard to do anything. So it, it's going to be a number. And, and because you're dealing with a business, a business doesn't understand emotions. A business is a thing. It's just, it just sits there. And at the end of the month, if it can pay the bills, great. But at the end of the month, if it can't pay the bills, then it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't yell. It doesn't scream. It doesn't jump up. It doesn't put any buttons. It just stops. It just nothing happens. So you are the life force. So you are the impetus behind anything happening. So it's what you do. So the game and, and again, the more you make this a, a, an activity of enjoyment, the easier it becomes. So you have a game. Let's say the game is you define this independence, financial independence, what that means to you. Then the next thing you have to look at, and this is called reality, is what does that mean in terms of Nikon? So I'll give you a prime example so that you can make sense. When I first started, um, what happened was somebody showed me a check for $22,000. And I looked at that check and I said, holy crap, if I had $22,000, that would save my behind. I would be in seventh heaven. Everything would be great. 
but what it did for me was show me that that potential was there. Now, I had tried network marketing for, man, 15 years, no success. So I was up against this. It, I, I don't think it's going to work for me. I don't think I can make it work. But I saw this check and I had this huge need or want or desire over here to get this thing over here. So I said, all right. I talked to my sponsor. Now, Clay was my sponsor at the time, and he was a professional networker. He was probably at, at the time involved with five different network marketing companies. And, and that's who he was. I, I couldn't do it, but that's who he was. And anyway, he, he said, well, what's going on? I said, well, I can't afford this. I can't do that. I can't do that. I said, well, I'll help you. So then I got to a mentor. And I got to a mentor that showed me the, the ropes of, of really what to do. And really what it boiled down to, Renee, was just getting out there and talking to everybody I could possibly talk to. And, and it was based on this idea. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And this is what you really have to understand here. It's really got nothing to do with you. It's what did they see? See, this is our job. What our job is to show other people what we've got so that they can make a decision on getting involved, okay? And they're going to get involved if they understand. Here was the, the realization. And what I observed over years and years and years of this activity was when people thought they could get what they wanted by being involved, they got involved. So... When I started to talk to somebody, I would talk to them about uh, the idea of getting, you know, this is a business and we I'd have charts and graphs and numbers and a calculator and how much do you want to make and all that stuff, right? But the re reality of it happening was when they cognited, realized, you know, if I did this, I think I could make it work. If I did this, you know, I could pay my bills. If I did this, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, so that was huge. That was really huge for, from, so then with that objective in mind, it was like, okay, then my job is just to figure out how to talk to other people, what to say, when to say it, what questions to ask, and at the at first, and again, I that at that time I we had mostly we had about seven products. We didn't have a lot of products. Most of it was magnetics, and the and the key core product was a sleep system. There was an article floating around said that fifty percent of the population can't sleep, so I figured that would be the way to go. And the testimonies were awesome of people utilizing magnetic products. Well, today we've got more testimonies on all kinds of different products. We've got them on sleep. We've got them on nutrition. We've got them on weight loss. We've got them on, uh, uh, you know, just they're, they're all out there. They're all on YouTube or somebody's got a, a testimony. So we know the product works. So if the product works for those guys, is it going to work for the rest of the population? And the answer has got to be yes. I mean, theoretically, we're talking in, in, in one sense of theoretically, yes. If it worked over here, it's probably going to work over there. And, and that, that became the, uh, the, the issue to, to say, okay. So now the next thing I needed to do was, okay, and I'm gonna liken this to another analogy called fishing. And uh, some of you fished, some of you have fish, some of you like to fish, some of you've never fished, but the idea of fishing, you'd get a, a, a fishing rod and you'd get a reel and then you'd have a hook and then on the end of the hook, you would put bait. And then you'd throw that line into the water and see what happens. Now, for fishermen that have fished for a long time, you know that you got to throw that line out there a lot. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, every once in a while you get lucky and you get a big fish. But a lot of times you get fishes that are too small and you have to throw them back into the lake, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes you don't get anything. They don't bite. They take your food. They, they're fish are smart. They know how to steal the food off the hook, all that kind of good stuff. So 
what I saw was, number one, not everybody's going to do this. Not everybody's going to like the product that I have to sell and are, are represent. And not everyone thinks the same way I think. Thank God. Because then it would be a boring place, wouldn't it? If everybody was in the same, you know, that's what makes it so interesting is the diversity of what's going on out there. So it's it's the Cinderella story in a sense where what you're looking to do is you got this shoe and you're trying to get it somebody to step in and see if it fits. And 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 so I just did a new introduction video for the smart networker. If you go to DaveRolf.com at the top, you push the button and you know watch the intro video and I kind of talk about this kind of stuff. And it's a great video if you want to get other people to take a look at what, what this is all about and all the support. But anyway, I also realized at this point in time, that's also part of my job, is to find where the shoe fits. And that became the qualifying piece. Not everybody's qualified. And that's important to understand because there's two ways to go. And I, and I, again, I'm looking for a distributor because the distributor does everything. I'm not just looking for a retail customer who only goes one way. I want the guy that's going to also sell product and then recruit other people because that's, that's how this thing, that's the magic of what we've got. That, that's the real plus, the benefit of what this opportunity is. It's so unique. And again, I've done all kinds of businesses from small enterprises to public companies. Then what's so fascinating about network marketing is how little money you have to put up, but how large you can get and how much help you get for virtually nothing. It's, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So it's an interesting concept. And the more you know and understand that, the nicer the picture you can paint. So let's let's paint the picture. So how would you like to, you know, have 10 to 15,000 dollars a month coming in every month that comes in on the 15th? All you have to do is watch your organization, make sure you're qualified and get the product that you need and you're on a few phone calls, maybe one trip a month and there you go. What do you think? Does that sound exciting? Sound interesting? Sounds like it's something you'd like to do? Now, some people might say, "Nah, don't like that idea at all." Some people might say, well, God, yeah, how do I do that? Now, so they need a map. They need direction. I did this analysis for uh, back in the day. This was in 2010, and it was called Analysis of Performance. You probably can't see it because of the silly web page, but it was from 1990 to 2010. And one of the keys that I found out in this analysis of doing this business is the field needs direction. This is huge because everything happens when you direct it. If you don't direct it to the direction that you want to go, it won't happen. So, so again, in the sense of take a look at what's going on in your society. Take a look at the social stuff that's being talked about. Take a look at how unhappy people are. Take a look at the frustrations that they're having. So there's no shortage of problems or issues. But the person that will do this just doesn't know that they're ready to do this because they haven't been talked to yet. That's all. So from your perspective, Renee, I wouldn't worry about the past. I would look at who doesn't know about this that I can talk to. I, I'd get my story straight. I, I, you know, I tweak it to what it is, you know, that uh, I, 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 okay. What, what in essence is your job? It's to be interesting and create interest in them. So, you know, let's do another analogy here. You're, you're, you know, you're single and you're going out on a date. Are you going to wear a t-shirt and, you know, and uh, grubby jeans and and don't do your hair don't put on your makeup hell no you're gonna dude yourself up do that <laughs> well, it's the same thing here you got to put your best foot forward now by observation what i realized over time number one there is no such thing as failure here it doesn't exist that's a concept that's been created because people didn't get results but here's why they didn't get results they didn't do what they were supposed to do. 
And they didn't do enough of what they were supposed to do. Nobody said this was a slam dunk and you were going to make a fortune overnight. Your job is to take the idea and figure out how you make it work. Now, I mean, I really want you to think about that, how you make it work based on who you are and your circumstances. Now, if you understand the mechanics of it, if you understand the little intricacies about it, then you can make it work. And it's storytelling at best. You know, it, it's, again, all right, so let's see an analogy. Okay, I'll give you an analogy, another one. So I'm sitting in my house, and at that time I was living in Massachusetts, and it was probably 2009, and, and I was you know, still making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a month in income. And I hadn't sponsored anybody since 1995. I was enjoying the lifestyle that I had created. And a friend of mine calls me up and he has a bright new idea. And he, he says, I, I've, I've created this new product. They're called sneaker skins. And I said, what? Yeah, they're called sneaker skins. They're like, let me send you a picture. And it's like a glove for a shoe. You can go to, it's called sneakerskins.com. And just as it sounds, it's spelled. And um, I thought, oh my God, this is incredible. What an idea, okay? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I'm looking at it. And what he wanted was me to get involved with him and help him develop this product. It wasn't network marketing, it was traditional business. And, and so the idea was we'd go get logos. I mean, not logos, but we get sponsorship and then we get license to put teams, sports teams names on these shoes and go around and sell them. Well, again, he sent me some prototypes. I just was like, so cool. I mean, like I was beside myself, it was so cool. And I thought we're gonna make an absolute fortune here. Now, we went about it. We needed to raise some capital. So I put together a group of people and we raised, a, you know, a few, what did we raised, maybe a million and a half dollars, maybe a million dollars, somewhere in that. It wasn't what we needed, but it was a good start. And then we got into the manufacturing process and we hooked up with the wrong manufacturers. Then we went to China and then we went to Mexico. Then we went to Europe. We went all over the place trying to find the right manufacturer and so on and so forth. And then we had all the college teams and then we got into some NFL teams and then baseball teams and cartoon characters and all of that sort of stuff. Kids lines and man, spent an absolute fortune. The bottom line was it never worked. It never, never went anywhere. We, we spent probably 12 years at this thing and spent a lot of money, a lot of time and it didn't, just didn't get off the ground. Now, why am I saying this? Well, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. And, and again, but what I want you to understand is, is in hindsight, what we didn't do, we should have done would have made it work. We needed more money. We needed to do more. And, and I'm busy with doing what I'm doing. He's busy doing with that. This was the alternate kind of a deal, but it was the beginning that was important. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And that's your job, is to get other people to see this deal. For, for, because it's a solution to their life. It's a solution to their situation. It's a solution to you know, what, whatever's going on. Now, the people that are in the past are in the past. You're in present time. And you've got a future. So you've got to look now and in the future. And it's what you do today creates the future. The future, is the, there is no such thing as the future, and there is no such thing as the past. It's always been present. So it's always present time. Now, you take a picture of a snapshot of what happens now, and then tomorrow you look at it, and tomorrow, like right now, looks like it's the future. But when you get there, it's now. And then you look back at now, then. You see how this goes? <laughs> I mean, it's just all goofy. So. So the idea is, is you get out there on mass today and what's your job? Your job is to get other people to take a look at what you've got, to find the problem and then present them with the meek and solution. Now, 
if we look at the health care side of things, do a Google search and do yourself a favor here. You'll find that most Americans aren't so concerned about their health. They're more concerned about their health care costs. It's an interesting, interesting situation. Now, but 94% of the working population works. Really high number. Why? Because everybody needs to put a roof on their head, clothes and food. So that became, for me, the area that I had to keep my eyes. What was the majority of people looking for? They were looking for a great way to put food on the table. They were looking for a great way to live their life and, and, and earn what was required. They were looking for, a, you know, a, 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 you know and, and there's, God, there's gazillions of ways out there, man, just gazillions of ways. So therefore, what's going to be the key for you to attract attention is your mousetrap has to be a little bit better. So it's how well do you explain the mousetrap to them so they can see that as a solution. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint here. So if you look at your compensation plan, if you look at today's marketing plan, and you look at making $8,000 a month, you're not going to make $8,000 a month becoming a silver or gold. That's too small a target. So here's what's going to happen. The person's going to get involved, get do the job, and then they're not going to see the result that they thought they were going to get. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to leave or they're going to quit. So they need to see a bigger picture. So if you look at it and say, okay, if you want to make eight to $10,000 a month, you've got to have at least 40 or 50 you know, distributors that are building a business in your structure. Well, how many people are in America? 350 million? How many are in Canada? 40 million? How many are in Latin America? Another 200 million? I mean, how many are in Europe? <laughs> it's perspective. Now, do another Google search and how long does it take the average small business to become profitable? And you'll find it takes anywhere from three to five years. Whereas you could become profitable in a month. So information is critical. What you say is like, it's so important. But if you're not thinking or utilizing data or information to wowie your, your, your customer or potential prospect, then you're not going to get the results that you want to get, are you? Because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, yeah. Well, sign up, Anika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll enjoy some products. Yeah, okay. All right. You call me if you need any help, okay? Ain't gonna work. See, again, let's look at it from another avenue. This is your business. Consider the people that you recruit are your employees. Do you want employees that are going to work or do you want employees that are going to sit home and watch TV all day? So who's going to work? The person that's going to work is the person that sees this as a solution to their situation in life. So I see this as a situation. I see this as holy crap. This guy made 22 grand in one month. I need to make $8,000, put food on the table. The business that I was associated with broke. I lost all my money, all my credit. I have nowhere to go. This is the only choice I've got. You know, if you help me get started here, I think I can make this work. So the first thing I do is I borrow $3,000 from my mother-in-law. First thing, I bought $3,000 worth of product. And then guess what I had to do with that stuff? I had to go sell it. I had to get other people involved with it. My necessity level went up the, boy, did it go up high. So in that process, I signed up I think it was um, five people. We each bought a, a, a demo pack, 500 bucks. That was $2,500. And then I, minis and other things were the other product. And I rolled it over. And I rolled it over a second time. And then, and then I found a, a really good distributor. And then we, I was taught how to build this distributorship. 
Now, I started to see potential. And it was at that time I was saying, okay, I'm still not paying my bills. I'm still being you know, hampered by it's not performing the way I want it to perform. It's getting there, but I need to go full time. I got to take that leap. So I'm a business guy. So I go to my father-in-law and I borrow enough money to pay the bills for three months. And so I can go to work. And I, he lends me the money. I get the bills taken care of. I go to work. I build it up to 8000 a month. And I pay him back over the next three months. So it was a business. Now, I'm telling you this for a reason, not because this is my story, but it's everybody else's story. It's everybody else's story out there. I mean, look at how much credit people utilize. Look at the, the economics of, the, of society. It's, a, it's ridiculous. So people borrow their way. This is business. This is what it's all about. And I'm, and I'm, okay, the nice stuff about feeling well and all that sort of stuff, great. Okay, that's all good. The nice thing about helping people, that's great. That's fine. I've helped more people in my career than most people will ever help. And in, in, in doing this, I, you know, I really took a look at it in the sense of the, the hundreds of thousands of people that I've touched as a result of me trying to build a business and the millions of dollars that have been generated in commissions, tens of millions, probably over 150, maybe even 200 million in, in generated commissions. So what was the captivating audience with the dot-com era and the internet? It was the fact that people could get on the internet and make a fortune with very, you know, it took them a while to figure it out, but they all went there like, you know, blind sheep. So again, your ability to communicate what this is. I mean, just think about this for a second. Okay, you develop a distribution of, of products. How, how much do you have to figure out how to distribute? A couple hundred thousand? That's it. You could have a nice $10,000 a month income for the rest of your life. That's the object, that's the idea. And then you can play with it, then you can add to it, then you can keep it going. And that's what I did and took it up to multi-millions of dollars for, for on a personal level, huge organization, because that's the way it grows. But if you're not talking about it, if you're not putting that out there, it is not going to happen. And, and, and again, Renee, it's not about you. It's about the people you talk to. So, that will fix that if you if you allow it to fix itself by you creating the story, you creating the goal, you know. And again, in the beginning, the people that you talk to today's the beginning. It's the new day. It's the new beginning. It's the new Renee. It's the new start. It's the new this whatever. They don't know that you've been what you've done, and it's up to you to tell them if you want to or not. And that and it has no bearing on anything. So. Does that answer that question for you? It, it does. Thank you very much. Definitely. Okay. All right. So we're at 944. That covered those points. I think we'll end it off right now. I'll stop the recording. And uh, so we can possibly, I'll take a look if we're going to post this. It could be good. Um, stop recording. And we will see you on the next Smart Networker.